This, 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 this show is brought to you by Safety FM. Adult content, frank safety discussions, and stories that might sound unbelievable. But believe me, every one of those stories is true. We didn't start the safety war, but we are going to fight to win it. For our families, for our communities, for our workplaces, and for our lives. This is Jim Polzel from Safety Wars. And I wanted to thank everybody who reached out to me, uh, mostly through social media, and told me what I should be covering here. What are they interested in, right? Why would I want to talk about very esoteric things? And I, uh, as everyone knows, I'm a member of the Prepper community. That's the three to five percent of Americans that have taken at least five minutes out of their day, five minutes out of their life, and said, what the hell am I going to do if there's a problem? So, what do we do here? Preparing for a flood. I went to ready.gov, downloaded their info, and we're going to talk about it and everything else. So, they basically have now, let's talk about this. You have to do the three A's. Assess, analyze, and act. That's what your whole thing is with this stuff. You have to assess what your issues are, analyze them, prepare, and then act when finally something happens. I didn't think that I would ha ever have an issue with floods. Personally, last year, we had... The Safety Wars Studios, also known as Fallout Shelter Studio, I affectionately call it that. We had a flood uh, because of Hurricane Ida. It took us about a year to recover from the flood, and that was only three inches of water. This isn't what you see out west and in some other areas from down south where we have huge floods, storm surges, things of that nature. And guess what? Now you have a huge situation. We have real, we had a situation here where we never had a flood our neighbors never really had floods you know, a little bit of water a little bit of seepage no it never had an issue i was down in the basement preparing for this broadcast for this safety wars up safety wars stuff whatever episode it was and what do you think happens i do a great job as always i record the episode as always i go i hit Upload, I hit this, I hit that, and I was sitting in my stool, right? I have a stool that I normally sit in for recording and where I can move around and everything. I put my feet on the ground. I had socks on my, I, I usually wear shoes, but this time I had socks. I put my feet down and I'm in water. I'm like, son of a gun. There's a little tiny crack. And I said, now we got a problem. I go out and call Mrs. Pozel. I, hey, honey. I got, we got water, I'm down here with a shop vac, I'm shop vacing, and no, uh, I, I went and I said, well, what do we have? I have my brand new washing machine and dryer, I go out in the backyard, I got a couple of cinder blocks from the old owner, I put everything up on cinder blocks so I don't have destroyed uh, appliances, I'm blah blah blah, and we're starting and after about three or four hours, we lose in the battle. We got as much as possible out. But uh, we lost the battle. <laughs> Safety warrior was not good that day. Believe me. And it took us roughly a year to recover from this. We had three inches of water. Uh, it's really impacted my business up until really recently. Uh, because now, you know, having to put everything back. But, you know, now I have a nice setup. Better than ever. And we're set up to do what we need to do. That's from my experience with personally with a flood. I've never been involved in anything else, so I only have to go by what I read, what I see on TV, and stories from my many friends and listeners. So, what do you do? Yeah, right. Uh, this is right from ready.gov. You have two scenarios, right? If you're under a flood warning, find sh shelter right away. That's what they say. What could floods be from? Anything, really. A weather events? It could be uh, 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 rain, snow, coastal storm, sur storm surges, overflows of dams and other water systems. And it could be at any speed. It could be slow moving, fast moving. 
happening in the blink of an eye, happening well, over time here, right? And what are the big things, right? Power outages. We're talking power outages, uh, uh, disruption in transportation, uh, and damage to buildings and landslides. Some of the stories I have come from Superstorm Sandy 10 years ago. Unbelievable. And what what did we have with Superstorm Sandy? We had uh, a very large storm. I don't think it was even really a hurricane, technically. But what happened was it was a very long lasting storm and it felt the effects from uh, the Delaware, that area of Maryland, coming up the coast, into New Jersey, New York, all the way up in Orange County, really. And there are some good things that came out of it. All the counties up here came out with community re emergency response teams. They were really pushing it after Superstorm Sandy. And I encourage you, when there's a community emergency response team in your area, to actually join it, number one. Number two is that it taught me a lesson in all this preparation because guess what we were prepared for superstorm sandy where we live not in this house where i am in our old house i tell you what being a newlywed i was a god for two weeks <laughs> right because we had all the preparations that we needed what was our main issue there was superstorm sandy and the floods and everything sewage treatment plant uh, i'm sorry sewage treatment plant got flooded out and the water treatment plant got flooded out. We couldn't drink the water. We still had water. Which means that we had enough to flush the toilets and it was safe enough to take a shower in, but it wasn't safe enough to drink. That sort of thing. We also had the ability to evacuate to my in-laws in upstate New York. That would have been a very severe situation had we not had that. Uh, so that's one way. It's not, you may not be flooded, but where you get your utilities from, that might be flooded. Uh, even power plants might be flooded and impacted. So what happens when that happens? You have no power. What do you need? Generator. This is for, right from, again, from FEMA, ready dot up. Stay off of fast moving water, uh, off bridges, over fast moving water. I would say, this is where I, what I see. Every time I'm out in a flood, or on the way home, a flooded area, things of that nature. I, I try not to drive in this stuff. What do you see? You see somebody in a vehicle. It could be a big truck. It could be a small car. They say, I can make it through that water. It doesn't look that deep. And what do you think happens? They drive in it. And before you know it, I didn't know a Corvette could float like that. Right? Back in the day, before smartphone, I used to see crazy stuff happen all the time. I wish I had photos. Evacuate if you're told to do so. So if you're told to evacuate, probably a very good idea to evacuate. Again, this is from FEMA, right? I'm not giving you advice here. I'm just going off of what the official advice is. Move to higher ground or higher floor. That you need to be careful of. Higher ground, obviously. You're in your house, you can't evacuate. Move to a higher floor if possible. Problem is, People move to their attics often. And what do you think happens to the attic? They have no way out. So unless it's like a dire emergency, don't do that and stay where you are. Those are your decisions. What do you do with all this stuff? You personally, what can you do? Prepare, assess, analyze, and act. The triple A's, as I always say. Assess what your flood risks are. Is it uh, your house flooding? Is it from a body of water, a river, a lake? Maybe you're at the bottom of a hill. Anything like that. Survive. Uh, right now, well, let's... So prepare now. Know your areas. Type of flood risk. Sign up for your community's emergency warning systems. Oh, I think most communities in the United States have a reverse 911 system. If flash flooding is a risk in your location, right? Monitor potential signs such as heavy rains. Learn and practice evacuation routes and shelter plans. If possible, identify where your bug out location is. Is it a shelter? Is it 
higher ground somewhere in your community. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? What resources am I going to have when I get there? This all goes into your bug out bag, what they call in the industry, where you have enough stuff for up to two or three days. Food, clothing, uh, water, uh, documents, any documents that you need. Fl uh, insurance policies, credit cards, credit card bills, paperwork, things of that nature. Are you going to back it up to the cloud? Are you going to have a hard copy? Today, you can back a lot of things up to the cloud. Barring any major cat catastrophe, it's still going to be there. Right? Uh, but hard copies are probably always best. And make sure everything is in one place. We're talking medical records, medication needs, doctors, pharmacy information, pharmacy RX numbers, or the prescription numbers, things of that nature. If you're eligible, get uh, uh, flood insurance. And important documents in a waterproof container to say, okay, protect your property. Where valuable items need to be moved to higher loca low uh, locations. And big thing, maintenance on the outside. Are your gutters clean? Do you have any impediments to water being drained off your property? Is Do you have valuables in your basement or lower floors that may have to go to an upper floor? Right, upper floors higher above the flood. During the flood, depending on where you are and the impact and the warning time of flooding, go to a safe location that you have already re-identified. And I would communicate that to your loved ones and your friends and family, whatever is appropriate, where you're going. If told to evacuate, do so immediately. Listen to the weather stations, right, NOAA, and other uh, uh, weather resources in your community. Do not walk, through, swim, or drive through floodwaters. We understand driving through floodwaters now, all of a sudden your car is destroyed and because you misjudged the depth of the water and everything else, but just moving through floodwaters physically. Right now, you don't know what's in that water. It could be contaminated. It could be sewage. It could be glue metal. It could be hazardous materials. It could be obstructing ha uh, hazards under the water, like nails, tripping hazards, so on a nail, tripping hazards, things of that nature. You also have a biological hazard, right? Dirty water, biological hazard. So you avoid doing that. Uh, stay off bridges and over fast, uh, stay off bridges over fast moving water. Realize that in a, uh, when a flood, I didn't do a, a good assessment back in the mid 2000s. Where one of my routes to work, there was uh, uh, going over a bridge, the Delaware River by the Delaware Water Gap. And you go over that, water is normally 10, 15, 20 foot below that bridge. Right? Maybe more. I'm taking a guess there. Well, guess what? Uh, we had floods one time, torrential downpours, mid 2000s. That water was up to the bridge something to uh, consider uh no and then after the flood waters uh, receded i noticed that all of the houses along the river that was a uh, 40-year flood 45-year flood meaning it had not occurred in 45 years early 1970s uh all the houses along the river were on stilts and i was like oh i always wondered about that that's because it flooded out i was at the beginning of my career so find out what your history is around your neighborhoods and everything else if trapped in a, a building go to its highest level but you avoid the attic right and go on the roof as a last resort listen to uh, and be safer after right keep off the roads except during emergencies be aware that snakes and other animals and other critters may come up uh, don't think that because you're in the Northeast that you're not going to have a hazard of uh, all different types with animals, whether they're snakes, reptiles, what have you. You'd be amazed what people keep in their house. Uh, and we're going to talk about generators and power losses elsewhere, but there's always a hazard of a uh, electrocution. Electricity and water do not 
mix very well because it gives you a clear path to ground where electricity wants to go and you could get shot. So that's what we're talking about with floods uh, and some of my thoughts and some of my experiences with floods. But what's the idea? You have to assess what is going on, what you might uh, experience, what and everything else with floods. And that's wall. But not only floods, it's in the recovery afterwards. And remember, it's just things. We're talking about potentially your life, your life, your loved ones, your friends, and in your community. You gotta protect yourself and your community and your friends. Possessions are possessions. You'll get more. I, you know, it's very upsetting. I lost a lot of stuff in our little flood here, but a lot of people lost a lot more than that. And that's something you need to prepare for, prepare for ahead of time, and just have a plan and communicate it to whoever you're responsible for, whoever's appropriate. For Safety Wars, this is Jim Holza. In the professional safety community, communication and planning are just a few keys to your program's success. The question many practitioners have is, where do I start? Dr. Jay Allen, the creator of the Safety FM platform and host of the Rated R Safety Show, has built a global foundation to help you along the way. Go to safetyfm.com and listen to some of the industry's best and most involved professionals, including Blaine Hoffman with the Safety Pro, Sam Goodman with the Hop Nerd, Sheldon Primus with the Safety Consultant, Jim Pozell with Safety Wars, Emily Elrod with Unapologetically Bold, and many others. As individuals, we can do great things, but as a team, we become amazing. Dial into safetyfm.com today and surround yourself with a powerful force of knowledge and support. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen.